Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Well, here, yeah. Clash of Steel. It is Clash of Steel. Uh, so we've already unboxed the uh, British versus German Clash of Steel. This is the Soviets versus American. Woolly Mike has already had this because he pre-ordered it uh, before we unboxed it. <laughs> And there's already built the models for your viewing pleasure. Yep. So let's see what comes in the box. So, you get 21 highly detailed models. That is true. 22 tank commanders. Complete rule book. Complete start here rules. 20 dice. Two force booklets. 20 unit cards. 34 tokens. Three objective markers. Two victory point dials. 26 tactics cards, 6 mission setup cards, 6 mission rule cards, and 22 objective cards. Yes, some cards. It's a lot of cards. Lots of cards. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get the bits out, then we're going to talk about the components, and then we're going to talk about the tanks for you. Thanks, bro. What else is there in there? Dice. Team Yankee dice. Red and Red blue. blue. Nice colours. Two sprues each of tank commanders. Excellent. And a pack of stuff for die, uh, uh, rules. Decals and the rules, which you've already... Yeah, let's have a quick look at the decal sheet then. Let's start there. And then you can move the box out of the way. Yeah. Because it's, uh, so the decal sheet is nice. It is a Clash of Steel decal sheet insofar as it has all of the nations on a single decal sheet. So you've got little red stars, big red stars for your Sovietskis, a lot of Balkan crosses for your Nazis, uh, sorry, your denazified Germans, uh, and then various sizes of Allied star. I like that because you can cover a lot of tanks with this little sheet. Yes. A whole bunch of them. Uh, so that is a great decal sheet for any World War II player. Your rules pack. So we went into detail in this in the previous video, so we're not going to spend long on this now. Uh, once we get it out, we're just going to show you what there is. Whoops. I don't want to lose all of it. So you get set of core rules and what this is is like a start here pamphlet basically i'm a bit confused because it feels like it folds up in the wrong way I feel like it does the yeah. other way it's but maybe maybe that's me um but that's like if you literally never played flames of war team yankee any of that kind of family of games this is going to get you started the rule book is fantastic because this game is flames of war light or Team Yankee like for those of you that have played it. So there's no infantry rules, there's no artillery rules. There's a little bit of change of language um, to make it more consistent for a tank only game. So you don't have gone to ground, you have camouflage. Yes. But otherwise it is the same rule. Uh, it's very nicely laid out, lots of illustrations, very clear. But this is also uh, very well indexed. It's got, uh, it's got your kind of uh, mission rules at the back. Mission special rules explains them, commander abilities, and they matter because it's played in a slightly different way, which we'll talk about more as we go on. Card sheet, lovely card stock. It is. Pay attention when you're putting the two dials together, the wheels go to it. I, you did it wrong. I put mine together wrong, and then you told me in the video to do okay. it. <laughs> so you assemble a turn, it's a, it's a victory point wheel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and there's a couple of little plastic pegs it poppers in a baggie that peg them in john built one for the previous video we suspected because it does tell you which is left and right that yeah. there's a right and wrong so your numbers are upside down are they mike yeah and um, those clips once they lock in they're locked right that, and that's that like, yeah. like a rivet uh, so other things on here you've obviously got you've got bailed out markers and destroyed markers on you've got some which is my command tank markers your objectives is the thing that's different so as we talk as I say, we won't talk about it in huge detail because we've already done it, but the way that you, you generate your mission, instead of rolling a couple of dice and saying, I want to be aggressive and I want to be defensive, and then it says you're playing mission seven, you have a procedurally generated thing, which is where you draw a map, you draw mission rolls, 
you draw um these are victory points and they sit on top of these victory point locations which you are told where to put on the map the map pick card that you draw tells you where your reinforcements come in where you deploy and where to put your victory tokens and the thing about the victory point um things is they're revealed at different points in the game turn one two three depending on the markers they may be destructible objectives one time collected you might have to commit can do some kind of special condition to collect it it may be replaced with another one so it just mixes it up and i really like this because this is a game about driving tanks around and having a few beers i think it is I think the other thing is as well, some, some cards stay in play for longer, and yeah. others, once you've revealed them, then a new card comes along. Yeah. So the game could be evolving. So, which And it's nice that they've provided those dials, because you are accumulating victory points, but they're not in a Bean County kind of way. In most circumstances, you'll do a thing and you'll get some points. All right. Then we have the Force Booklets here. And this is a great inclusion. This is a really good starter set for a game. Uh, because these are, you've got your kind of generic fluff about their setting. I think it's like 1948. The Germans have surrendered, um, and then what we've gone into the Polish War, and it's the Allies against the Soviets, and the Allies have rearmed the Germans and are going for it. That's your fluff, but then it's a mini codex. Yeah. Now, as soon as they continue to develop these games, we'll get hardcover versions with these with multiple force combinations but it's basically telling you in, in, in here the starting force is a, is a shock group or in the case of these is a combat command which is how the americans divided yeah. up their armored forces um in there these are the units that you can take these ones can't support options they come in these combinations and when we look at the unit cards they actually provide unit cards for models you don't have so everything that's in this list as a potential unit you could use in your force they provided a stat sheet for so you've really got everything to get you through quite a number of games they also provide some silhouettes to the tanks because you're gonna find <laughs> tanks are gonna have quite similar names or numbers and um, well which one is that well you've got a you've got a silhouette or like a you know Observer Boys Recognition Guide of Soviet Tanks and so yep. to an American ones. Because there's more vehicles that are compatible with this range, both from the from the late War Flames of War stuff, the 1945-1944 stuff, but also science fiction -y vehicles that were maybe yep. only prototypes and stuff that was in the early 50s. We've got the how to builds. Yes. That, which is nice that they've provided this kind of, these are obviously for the models that they've provided. They tell you how to build the kits, the, the way that is going to make the units that you can use in the game. Sometimes the kit will make other versions. If you know that, you already know that because you use them for other things. Um, but if you go on their website and you kind of drill down into the product code, you will be able to find um, there's, there's often multiple variants on a sprue. Yeah. But they might not be suitable for this setting. You may decide you want to make them. The instruction sheets, though, being separate, everything about this set, it's like if if this is for one player and that's for the other, then we've got two of them. Yes. They're not, you've not got one booklet that you have to sort of tear in half or cut pages out of. It's very well set up for, like, well, those are your bits that you give to your mate while he goes off and plays the game uh, and builds his... Builds his tanks, reads his fluff, has his unit cards, and then you come back together and play the game. That's good, because this is often one booklet, as opposed yes. to several. You know, or, or even if you're like, you know, your mate's going to build your tanks because you haven't got a lot of time. So you keep the other bits and you give him... So as you subdivide the labour to get started, it's broken down appropriately. And I think that that's a really good thing in a start set, yep. rather than just one booklet. So the kits then. The tanks, they're funny. Some of these are real. Some of these are nearly real. And some of these are, are not real at all. Um, of these ones, do you want to start with the uh, Americans? Yeah. Okay. Because so we'll... I think I know very little about these American vehicles and how authentic they are. So we'll start with this sprue here, which is the T29 T30. I, I built the T30 version. 
right? And you've sprayed yours. They're, they're not yeah. this color on sprue. That's because he's primed it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. So this is the T29 T30. What do you know about the T29 T30, Mike? Experimental tanks. Some chassis were built. Some turrets were built. Mm -hmm. um, there was mostly experimental. I don't think any served in service and very few survived. The, the two versions, there's a different engine in the T29 and obviously a different gun barrel for the T30. If you're not finicky, you can mix and match because I think like the uh, World of Tanks starter sets comes with a T29. Right. So you could, if you're going to build T29, if you've got that, you could chuck it in. So the only difference between the two is a different engine deck. So you've got two engine uh, yeah. decks. So we've got two engine decks on sprue. Yeah. And two gun barrels. And two gun barrels. We've got three gun barrels on here. Interesting. It only, it... Yeah, so there's maybe another version of something we're going to see later. Possibly. So it's it, the maybe guide there's is... two copies of one of them. They're certainly two. They're numbered one to three forward. because it says T29, use barrel one. Right. T30, use barrel two. Yeah, and um, there is no there is nothing for. But there's definitely one on here with a double baffle muzzle brake. Yeah. So maybe there's another version of a tank that we haven't seen yet that this would make, or this would partly make. Maybe yeah. there's another sprue. Who knows? And they've got better at doing that. It's sort of there's um, there's often versions of tanks that are very similar, and they've made their kit to be able to do that, even though that tank is not yet in their game. Yeah, so th in this case, there's an upgraded engine, so it's got a different exhaust system, so a different engine deck. Big turret, is, this is one of the first tanks with the... It's got two-part ammunition, so you've got two loaders. Yeah. And um, that's the reason why the command is so far back. Is The commander's hatch yeah. on this is it is very back set. But it, like the Germans, though, it's, got, it's a central one rather than like yeah. the... The the traditional kind of the driver, the commander, and the load are a very similar kind of inline hatches and positions. The Germans had always had the commander's centre and back, so he can see and interact with the other crew crew members. And I think modern tanks basically use that system but where possible. They do, yeah. So you get three of those. Yep. Uh, so you get the option T twenty nine T thirty. So you put them together, mate. What was it like as a kit? Very quick, very easy, nice sprue gates on the tracks are nice and easy to clean, mm. fitted together nice, always the issue. Now, I've, I've fitted the machine guns, yep. but obviously we've got no aircraft and we've got no AA and we've got no anti <laughs> So you're never going to use it. So do you need them on? Mm. I like them on because... They look right. They're, they're, there is the chance of using them in proper Flames of War with new releases coming out. Yeah, so straightforward kit. It's interesting thing about the Pintle Mountain machine gun on this tank is it looks like it's operated by one of the loaders. Yeah. Not the commander. Because there are there are those like Mike mentioned, this two part ammunition, there's two loaders, and this gun is mounted in front of one of the loaders hatch. Presumably because if they put it back with the commander, it'd be firing like across the heads of the but once you're in action, surely the loaders' hatches are closed. Yeah. Um, so, interesting. Um, it's got strong keying, like a lot of their newer kits. Um, it's keyed in two places on one side and three places on the other side. So you can't fit the tracks the wrong way around. Because they are obviously different front and back. There's a return, you know, there's an idle wheel and there's a drive wheel. Not too many small parts. Just the commander's hatch except is it this one yeah there's a side loader the ammunition hatch on the right hand side it's on this side of the turret oh right yeah there's a bracket here do you know what that is it's storage you've got the storage bracket and then you've got the the, the ammunition loading hatch on the end of it right i see and the hatch is part of it's all in one piece of that it goes on to the sprue Goes on um, the side, yeah. So if you were inclined not to put this on, that's what that that circle is at the end. Yeah. That's the loading hatch for the ammunition. So they don't have to lift because it's quite tall. This tank. I mean, the turret is huge, but it's it's like grand kind of height, isn't it? So that's a long way to be hoisting up ammunition to when you go down to the bottom of the tank again. So the yeah. side side loading yeah, hatch. It's, it's the same sort of storage bustle on the side of the turret, like the parachutes have. Right. Yeah. So, 
Free T29 230s. When you read the stat cards, you want the T30. The guns are a lot better. Yeah. The guns Which are then better. brings us to. Shall I have a look at the stats? Yeah. Just to compare. So it's 29 or 30, this one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So your 29 has got a 105 mil gun, and your 30 has got a 155 mil gun. They are that. That's the difference, um, which means you've got. Uh, they've both got the anti tank power of 19. So clearly, the 155 is a much lower velocity. But it's the firepower check. It's a two plus on the 29. It's an auto on the 30. You are paying for five. You're paying a point of tank more for the T30. I'm inclined to disagree with Mike. I would get the T29 because I think I can make a two-up roll <laughs> almost every time. I don't want to pay points for an auto. But yeah. that's me. T28. T28. Just to keep it simple, we're going in reverse order now. So T28 looks a lot like that British sort of tortoise. Yeah, but, um, I believe the... The, the nickname that's coming, I don't know where the source of it is, this is the Doom Turtle. The Doom Turtle. All right. Real, not real? Some were built. One was lost. Well, lost. I mean, but you can lose a 50-ton vehicle quite easily, right? It, it, was, it, they were, they were, it was on an, uh, an evaluation drive and on a range, and it, it got stuck. They left it, and then they found it many years later. It's, it's, it's a siege breaker, so... Uh, the, the German defences, uh, Siegfried line, Maginot line, whichever one it was. Yeah, yeah. if we've got a really hard target and we need to take it out, what are we going to do about it? We need something with loads of armour and a gun. But it doesn't need to be turreted, it doesn't need to be battlefield responsive. That's the theory behind some of these kind of tanks, right? Great kit, but it's got its problems. The tracks, instead it's of being a single piece... It's two tracks side by side. It is incredibly wide tracks, this vehicle. Yeah. So each side wheels comes in two parts. Yeah. And then you put the bottom track run on. Because the fact that there are two tracks is, is reflected in the kit, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a single piece. You, you've got to be careful about the front tracks. Yeah. So like with a lot of... <clears throat> Although these are not strictly sort of two parts tracks in so far as you're not going to put the upper track on um, when the lower track is is glued onto the wheels and the running gear gravity is going to want to pull it away so you're going to need to pinch it and hold it forever <laughs> until yeah. it dries if you're using plastic glue you can probably peg it or rubber band it or something um, but that that's a neat that's a, a common problem with tracks that are not um, part of the wheels in terms of the moulding is them just coming away that little bit. And the problem is they're invariably going to come away at the most visible point, which is yep. at, like at the top at the front, because they're just going to peel away a little bit and then there's going to be a strange edge there. All right. Interesting point about this, in, in the real ones that were built, mm. size of the tank and the amount of tracks, it had a low, lower footprint pressure on the ground than the Sherman did. Because it's got incredibly wide tracks. Yes. Yeah. 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 What, what's its cross check on? Has it got a. Oh, that's interesting. So T28 has got a cross check of terrible eyes. Two plus. So not too but bad then. So it's going to steamroll them through most of them. Most of these tanks are going to cross on a two though. Because the way that cross works in Flames of War. No. It, it's a combination of a lot of potential things. It's not just a chance of getting stuck. It's a chance of like going through a brick wall and things. And yeah. there's a lot of weight and power behind, you know, <laughs> behind these vehicles. So often you might be surprised at the cross checks of the heavier vehicles, and, because they've normally got the power to get out or get through. Yeah. Again, got the 50 cal on a turret ring, and mm. um, these streets, these bull horns on the front. Um, the, the kit says you put them on the front in that sort of position, but it doesn't show it very clearly. Mm. And the what they are... The artwork shows better on it. So what these look like they are, now that we've looked at a picture rather than the IKEA. Yeah. The problem with this type of instruction is it's trying to represent something in three dimensions, you know, in, in, in a kind of grainy black and white picture, and its angles can often yeah. be a bit unclear. Right. So what these two kind of wings are it looks like is there a gun lock and so they're actually going to they rest sideways and they're going to 
meet together in the middle and cradle the gun. Um, and that's presumably for transport, because if there's going to be a problem with a vehicle like this, is that as soon as it tilts a few degrees down, its nose is going into stuck into something. Yeah, so I, I put them on like that, so I um, haven't mm. looked at a bit more of the artwork, I might need to revisit that. Yeah, and put them on sideways. I mean, they may be fully, like, a gimbal mounted anyway. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to know. But yeah, that's what they, that's what I think they are, the yeah. gun lock. So, two of those you get in the box. Yeah, two of them. So again, we talked about there's some difficulty with the track, um, but otherwise, you know, it's that same kind of, it's the lower hole, the upper hole goes on top of it. You've got your wheels and your running gear to then glue to the sides but you've got an inside and an outside yep and they are clearly marked left left right right because they're actually and, and I, they didn't need to do this and i'm surprised they have they, they're molded the inside wheels now on a lot of wargamer kits and even model kits something like that that you cannot see it, it's just a hollow tube <laughs> running all the way through. I think it's because, well, they felt they needed to do it, it's because of this big cavity at the front of the tank. You can see some of them. So if they have to mold some of them, they've then they've done, done it, they've done it on all of them. Um, it's probably why. Uh, how did you find any, any issues? Because of the weight of that gun, Similarly, you're going to have problems with it. It wanting to droop while it's gluing. It wanting to drift. <laughs> if you look off. at the gun, you will see. You see, yours is not not exactly straight. You've got this big round um, mantlet, mm. and it's that goes on, and then the gun goes in, and the, the 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 ball of that is quite difficult. It rocks on the the mountain. Yeah. Um, so you've got that mountain, and then you've got this the one next to it. Sorry, yeah, so that's the fixed on the turret, and then that's the mantlet. Yeah. And it's two balls onto each other, which you've then got to, you've got to get lined up nicely. And then right. you've got that big barrel, and mine's gone down and left. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, it, and again, it's a gravity issue. Yeah. Yeah? So that with something like that, you probably needed to put it on it on its back, so that if it, if it drifted, it drifted up, not down. Because tanks, tanks look bad when their barrels are pointing high, but they look terrible when they're bad. They just look too really sad. Well, I, I, norm I normally do it with with those. I, 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 it's, a, it's a bowl of blue tack, and you set it all up, but I don't know what I did. I don't yeah, like knock yeah. the tank or something. Yeah. But but the the weight of it is going to make it. Yeah. It's going to make it drag. So the, these are the lessons learned from our experiences. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's a nice, clean, confident kit, right? Yeah, yeah. it's very easy to clean. There's, 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 the sprue gates where they join is a very fine point. Yeah, that's, and that's so good. It's so confident that they do that. And most of the time, a good pair of sharp side cl clippers, you're, you're taking it off. You're not even having to trim afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But the the, the thinner, and sometimes you're going to find, like with Flames of War kits, Battlefront kits, you're going to find bits loose in the bottom of the box. It's because the sprue gates are tiny, and I want tiny sprue gates. And if that means that one of the pieces fell off the sprue and it's loose in the box, why would I care about that? Yeah. Why would that matter to me? It's not on the sprue. No, but I'm going to pull it off anyway. Because um, this just massively reduces cleanup time, reduces the chance you damage by twisting or cutting it when you're getting it out. I really like their kits for that. So that was T28. She has got the same 105 mil gun with the anti-tank power 20 and two up penetration. She's got 17 front armor as opposed to 14 from T29 and T30. And she does again cost a little bit more. She's 49 points for five, 44, 49. So she's the same as T30. So for that auto firepower that you want to pay for rather than two up, you could instead have another three points of front armor. That's a better use of your money. Yeah. Because I actually think in this game, 14 front armor is pretty crap. <laughs> when the gunner's got uh, anti-tank power at 19. All right. So, top two sprues on the far left there is the last piece. Good old here. M18 Hellcat. Hellcat, she's a, she's a new kit for Flames of War. Because um, I think she's a COVID kit. Yeah, it's a, it's of that era, so I think it might say twenty twenty one on there, but I think it might come out a year later. Because I've I've previously got one of these because you got it in an early wave of World of Tanks. Yes, yes, it's also been in World of Tanks. So 
So again, you've got the two baskets at the front for stowage. Yeah. And then the rail around the side. I don't know if it's a hand rail or... No, looking at this, the armor on this, it's probably the strength to keep the, the, the structural <laughs> and oh, like and maybe it's a roll cage, mate. I don't yeah. know. Well, but it's got a roll cage across the middle because it's open topped. Mm. Um, in other game systems, I love the Hellcat. <laughs> <laughs> they don't die easy. So but. Hellcat in this in this game is tiny little vehicle. Let's have a look at the stats on Hellcat. So Hellcat has got a anti-tank rate of 13. So it can't actually penetrate any of these tanks that we just looked at from the front. Um, but what you're taking Hellcat for is because you get four of them for six points in this game, whereas four uh, T-30s would cost you 39 points. <laughs> so you get quite a lot of Hellcats. Um, she does have the seek, strike, and destroy rule, which I think it's the same it's as the, the shoot and scoot rule. It's the same as the um, blitz stormtrooper. Yeah. If, if you pass the blitz move, yeah. you can then do a scoot and shoot. That's right. You can do two movement orders, provided it's the right two movement orders. Yeah. In the case of that, yeah. yeah. So you can blitz out of cover, take your shot, and then shoot and scoot back in. Of course, you need to pass a skill check for both of those. Yeah. Odds are you're going to fail one or the other. Well, she's got a three-up skill. So you take Hellcat because you get four Hellcats for six points, so you get two for three points. In the game, there is a com there is a need to be able to combat these extremely heavy tanks. Hellcat can still hurt them from the side quite comfortably. Is a reasonably good mover on the table in terms of like cross-check. Tactical cross well move. Yeah, tactical move is 12 rather than a, you often getting a 10 on these vehicles. So she's not she's not necessarily a terrible choice, but she, she couldn't she can't hold up in a firing line in a, in any system because it's open top and largely unarmored. And the the other point with the armored list which we'll talk about a little bit later is it's only a support option. It's not a force option. And by being a support option means you you can't take 60 of them and and that's kind of an important part of balancing the rules like yeah you can have a unit of hellcats and that's four of them and there you go enjoy yep. it um but yeah so the, the, again the kit was nice as following all of the kind of modern design cues of the flames of war stuff the turret she's got quite a complicated turret and for flames of war kit i suppose it is more complicated than many but considering how complicated it could be with like that, you know, all the, that yeah, that the, kind the, of bar, center bar, and the machine gun firing position that the Americans like to put a ring round for some reason. All of yeah. those things are kind of molded into other pieces. And the breaches part the mechanism is part of the actual turret build. Yeah. So you're not putting two pieces together like some. Because this could have been a hideously complicated yeah. kit, and it's really not. All right, great. So two of those in the box. So that's that's the seven American tanks that you get in the starter set. As you get, as I think we might have mentioned before, is you get the unit cards for all the other tanks that you are able to use in this. So if you have in your collection already some Chaffees, some Pershings, some Super Pershings, Easy Eights. M36 Jacksons or some jumbos, and these are 76 mil jumbos. So that you, there's more than one way to make a jumbo. Yep. Um, those things are all transferable into this game. Does that make that an African jumbo? Because it's got the bigger gun. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Soviet skis. Soviet skis. Yosef Stalin three. Yosef Stalin three. So this is the tank that terrified the West in the kind of victory parade in 1945. The Soviets had a few of these, and we were looking at them going, "Oh, oh, yeah. that's a pretty big tank." Exactly. Now the truth was, I had a very small number of them, and they were showing them off. Yeah, but they had designed them. The kit you built this, Mike, this looks like a very easy kit to put together. Very, very easy. The this the, There is an IS-2 and an IS-3. This this is only the IS-3. The, this is completely separate kits, so yep. I'm not sure how they differ. The pain on these is it comes with lots of extra fuel tanks and that. Yeah. They're a, they're a pain to fit. The external fuel tanks? Yeah. Because yeah, they're quite small... They do have some keying points on them, but they're more like flat surfaces to try and connect yeah. to the vehicle. 
The Soviets seem to love an external fuel tank. Yes. And I think it is about the vast distances in Russia. I think they're just like, there's no way we're going anywhere with a name that doesn't require us refueling. And, and just the need for fuel uh, is something. Because even like modern day BMP3s and stuff, they have external fuel tanks. Yes. And, it, and it's just it's just interesting design philosophy because you just don't see that on Western vehicles, at, you know, this period or earlier. Yeah, so with with the kit, nothing to say. It's just a straightforward, you know, a dozen or so pieces put together. Turret goes on nicely, easy to clean, key tracks. The top and bottom hull fit very, very cleanly together. There's no sort of like wobble or risk of a gap in them. Mm. So I think we're starting to hit the, we're starting to see them having to explore other ways of because injection molding, it kind of needs to be as linear as possible to get any, in that plane, to get the fidelity. And so they've broken down the upper hull. There are upper hulls with this kind of shape that are not broken down like this and are fine. Mm. So I think it's just the size of it, because although you attach this upper hull piece to this lower hull piece to get the start of it, you've actually got some of these edges missing and they're further down here. So you're going to go on. So how what, how was that? Did they fit nicely? Was it? They snug? went really really cleanly straight on. They they sort of tuck under and yeah. lock in. Yeah. So it's a case you, in in these um, fit them and then touch the glue onto them afterwards. Right. It's far easier than trying to get get them stuck to your fingers. But yeah. they slip in nicely. They locked in very well. Yeah. And very little sign of a gap. Yeah. I mean, there's no evidence of any gap on here that I'm looking at. Um, yeah, because that's the kind of piece that makes me nervous. Yes. You know, in terms of like, oh, you've not even been able to... Because I'm clearly casting this in a single piece would be superior. But your advice was, and the instructions say, like, they, they, they lock in. And that's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, all right, good. So that was the IS-3. Three of those. I know what the thing was with this. It's a very unusual... Is it like a, this pear-shaped turret? Something to do with nuclear blasts. It's not the true frying pans. No, 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 which come later. But it's in the same we'll see you in a minute with the the, the T50 series. Um, the the turret isn't is ergonomically fit. There's lots of there's lots of fire traps. Right. When when you're firing at that, there's lots of play. If that's how it looks on a real tank. Mm. There's lots of places for the shell to lock right in that turret ring and either jam it or penetrate. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's such an iconic look, though, isn't it? I love it. I love it. Great. That was IS3. What's she like as a tank, then? She's obviously one of your mainline units, and she was a real tank. From Armour 14, is comparable to some of those Americans. She's got that 122 millimeter gun, which is a two up firepower and 14 anti tank. 14 anti tank doesn't feel great in this game. It does not feel great. It does our uh, force? Yeah, these are only four points of tank. And if you get a whole bunch of them, because the Soviet doctrine is about having lots, you can take this in a unit of up to 10 and you are getting discount on that. So a single one is four points, you take it as a HQ. But 10 of them is only 33. Soviets go big or go home. Lots of tubes on the battlefield. Indeed it is. Uh, have they got the strict the rate of fire? Yeah. We didn't look at that with the Americans, actually, with those bigger tanks. Let's have a look at T-29 and T-30. Yeah, so those... those Bigger American tanks were having that um, moving rate of fire of one, but halted is two. Whereas I found with a lot of the Soviet ones, they have one and one, and they're often overworked. So moving work, and, and the IS-3 is, that's that big two-part ammunition deal. So your moving rate of fire is even harder to hit. All right, next vehicle. Okay, so if you want to go for the ISU series. The ISU series. Now, this kit has been around for a long time. Except for that bit. Except it's just been adapted. Yeah, so we get in here stat cards for ISU 122 and ISU 130. And there is also an ISU 152. 
Is there a gu- uh, is there a card for it? Oh, there is. There is. Yep. So, so again, three choices. So the ISU 152 and 122 are late war Soviet self-propelled guns or tank destroyer or whatever. The 152's got the six inch howitzer. The 122's got the big anti-tank gun. And the 130, do we know if this was made? This one, The I gun was. I know yeah. the gun definitely existed. I don't think this was a um, tank that actually rolled. Right, right. But yeah, again, little. Ish, it's a huge piece of plastic out the front, and that one we got a little bit of droop and sag on. Mm, yeah, I mean it's just the size of the guns, isn't it? There is there is keying on the gun. Um, they 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 kind of have like a like a tongue and groove system. Yeah. That it'll lock in, but it's not going to stop it from drifting a little bit from the weight of it um, if you're not able to prop it up somehow in gluing. I've built quite a few of these for late war Soviets, and again, you stick your top top bit, upper hole, lower hole, glue your tracks on, which are again keyed. Everything lines up neatly. But what's been interesting about this is this kit. This goes with IS2, this lower yeah. this lower hole is common to the O's. It's got the same tracks and running gear. And this main bit of the sprue has been around for a long time. But this little loop on here with this 130mm gun just started appearing on these sprues. Because yeah. I actually got one of these out of another box that wasn't for Clash of Steel. So they've obviously they've added this to that. And I assume rather than having it retooled they've just cut another bit into the existing tool. Yeah, it would just be uh, an agreement. You know, the actual mould, they've neat. just milled this yeah. bit into it. Um, so this is just replacing the old mm, ISU yeah. 152 kit. So short, medium or long barrel, depending on which choice which you gun. want. Yeah. And I, I built the IS 130, because I think that's all like the in-between gun from... I, uh, no, I think that's a big gun, isn't it? Isn't that the biggest of the guns? Uh, yeah, the 130. I mean, the one because the 152 is a howitzer. Yeah, it's that's the short-barreled yeah. one, low velocity. So the 130 for the ISU one, the ISU 130 with a 130 mil gun. It's got that one and one overworked rate of fire. Um, this is oh slow firing rather than overworked. Sorry, um, it's got anti-tank power of 18. So it's not. It's still not great. I've got to say these Soviet tanks are not great. Uh, 19 points for 5 or 9 points for 3. Got that choice in between. And sod all armour. <laughs> yeah, no armour at all. Is she a battle line unit? Have you got the book? Yes, it's a core unit. It's a core, core unit, units. so you can take these in in numbers. I don't, I don't think it's doing the things I need it to do. That's not that's not a good unit for me, and the one fifty two is a joke. Yeah, and on, on this scale, you up there's no infantry, of no use for a howitzer. Um, the one twenty two has got anti tank power down to fourteen. I'm I, no, yeah, no, because it can only take out things that I don't care about. I think um, it's unlike when you play Flames of War and somebody brings on something like a King Tiger or an IS two. You can ignore it. They've put so many points into that element of their force that you can just ignore it. Yep. When they've got six or ten of tanks like that, you can't ignore it. You've got to be able to deal with it. And I feel that, that these are all too much in the mid range. They can't, none of them can take fire. The 130 mil version sort of dishes out, but it's not, it's not the choice for me. I don't know about you. Next. So, the, 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 not a Russian player, but I'm, I'm building these so that um, we can play some, some down at home and then I'll, I'll bring my Americans up. Yeah. The T44, T54-1. This is interesting because T44 and T54 are totally different tanks. But not really. Yeah. That means totally different tanks inside. Yep. But on the outside, they're not actually all that different. The turrets are very different. 
but the actual exterior not significantly different. so if you take the big frame first of all you now have everything to build a t55 or a t55 am yeah this is the team yankee t55 yeah kit. you build the, the, the t55 standard and the am2 so yeah. you get one of those and then you get the new sprue so this is extra which yep. is going to allow you to make t44 and t54 out of this kit so uh, T44 turret is basically the T34 85. 85. It's essentially the same turret. It may be exactly the same turret. Um, for you uh, rivet counters out there, let us know if it is exactly the same. It certainly looks exactly the same. It's the same gun, it's the same shape, and it's about the right size. So that's the, the you get that one. And, and that's your T44. Yeah, which was a real end sort of tail end of World War II tank that just wasn't built in large numbers. I I, I believe they they built the chassis as an as a development and then put that turret on until they did developed the newer turret, which is the T fifty four. Right, and this one's got an even worse on overhang, and it's it's two frying pans put together. Reminds me of the old Victorian bed warmers. Bed warmer. Oh, you mean, you're, talking, you're talking about the shape of the turret? Yeah. Yeah. It is It is very flat and very round. That's, yeah, and that's where it comes from. So the T5455 series is, I believe, the most produced tank in the history of the world, isn't it? Maybe T34 is more, but there was loads of them. They're still in service in some places in the world. Many different versions. But the first iteration of them, the T-54-1, which is what we get in here, then that's not the version of tank that you're going to see in most of the kind of Team Yankee forces, because the turret is different, quite, quite different. It's a lot deeper, among other things, and a little bit smaller. Yeah. So what I liked about this kit mm. is the T-44, uh, T-54 spirit turrets, Two turrets, two of everything, including two turret pegs. So, so you can build all three turrets, which is the only significant difference between these um, vehicles externally. Complete three turrets and uh, just turrets. There, there is on the forty-four. There, this this insert here is different. Yeah. To the T fifty-five, but it's. So that on the T55, it's it's slightly, there's these kind of bumps on the outside and it just raises the height of the turret a little bit above the hull. Um, but it's very marginal. If you really care about that, then they're not, then okay. I think I might. I think I might care enough, yeah. but I'm, I'm not sure. So you don't use this. Instead, you use the much flatter one on the right and then is the glasses plate different the front armor plates are different on these you got three different yeah on the on on the different versions um and that's about positions of headlights and things yes. like that but again they're extremely minor differences so you know if you're if you're playing on a budget you you can definitely have a pretty good approximation of all three tanks with a single kit but if you care about it a lot, you build the three different versions. So, so what I've done is I've built the T55 AM because I've built myself a Swedish Team Yankee Army. I haven't mm. played them yet, but the, the Swedish can take Finnish oh. units of support. So I can have T55s in my army. So, so up against my East German T55s. Yes. There we go. Yep. T55 is a great tank to have lots of. If you already have a, a collection in the Team Yankees field, you would know. Uh, T55, T44. So uh, T44 in this, it's got that 85 mil gun. It's not got the combat power, uh, but that's reflecting the fact that it's three points a model, you know. So, and you can take them in a unit of up to 10, at which you're getting a further discount and 2.2 points a model, 22 points. Why would you do that? Well, because you might already have them. You can, and there's something about that swarm of vehicles, it's very Soviet, isn't it? Whereas T54 1, got an anti tank power of 15 rather than what was that, 12. So you, you kind of you're in the game, but barely at 15 two up five pounds 12 front armor I don't think you are in the game for most of the other vehicles that we've looked at 
But again, your points, this is four points a model or 32 for 10. So it, it, you're definitely are making a mistake if you go for 10 of these and 10 of these, because you've got nothing yeah. left with which to buy real tanks. But both of them look like good choices. I just wouldn't mm -hmm. cho choose both, you know what I mean? So if you're gonna if you're gonna build the Tiff fifty four ones, the card is there if you've already got your T thirty four eighty fives. There's a card in there. Yes, yeah, yeah. If you've already got the collection, because elsewhere in the range, then we've mentioned is that because that's the last sprue. Yeah, that's the last of the sprues. Uh, we've also got T thirty four eighty five. We've got SU one hundred and IS two. SU one hundred has got that same hundred mil gun on the T fifty four fifty five. 15 front uh, firepower and the IS-2 has got the 14 front uh, firepower. It's interesting because the Soviet ones have got real vehicles yeah. and, the, uh, and the American ones and the British ones have got a lot of like vehicles we decided not to build. Yeah. And what that means is the, the Soviets don't have so far this really overpower, overpowerful stuff. Um, now they must have been built, you know, had napkin designs for massive tanks as well. Because um, although IS-3 is massive compared to anything that we were using in 1945, it's not massive compared to these fantasy things that we decided yeah. we couldn't afford to build, you know, like um, the T-28 or whatever. So what I did is I had a look, because obviously I, I've... Got the Americans to add to my American forces, mm. and the Russians so I could play this game at home as well as here. Mm. So what we get in the box, and so we're going to take two T28s as our HQ. Okay. Yeah. Three T30s as our support unit, uh, our, our infantry unit, and I'm, I'm, no infantry. Sorry, I'm, our main our unit, protect, our core yeah, unit, our core language. unit. Yeah. And the two uh, M18s. As a support unit for 49 points. Okay, so it's like a half size game, yep. which is not a bad place to start, and from which you can expand a force. Yeah. The, the, the key point, though, is that we've got right, moving, moving and stationary rate of fire on the, the T28s of 1 1. The other two have got 2 1, so stay in stationary, we've got extra shots. So mm. those seven tanks are facing one T54 1 HQ unit. Mm -hmm. Five T fifty four dash ones in a separate unit because there's six of those. Kits there's six in. of those. Six T fifty fives. Yeah. Three IS threes. Yeah. And five ISU one thirties, which gives you a total of forty five points. Right. So the Soviets have got nearly twice as many vehicles. Fourteen tanks and slightly less points. Yeah. But they don't have much that can deal with any yeah. of those American tanks frontally. They need to get. Mm. They need to get really lucky, and they don't have many shots either. Yeah, so I'm, 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 a lot of the, the, the games, like um, I watched the Team Yankee start upset, mm. and that's so unbalanced with the firepowers. This looks balanced, and I think it'll, it'll be an interesting when this gets played. Well, it even with just how much that kind of fighting for the objectives thing uh, has got to be done, because I, 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 worry, I worry for the Russians if the Americans are able to just shoot at them. Yeah. You know, so you just kind of stand still and do some shooting because you're going to get through the Russian tanks a lot quicker than the American ones. But if you really have to scrap for the middle of the board, the Americans can't afford to get shot in the flank. They have not got enough tanks to be doing that. So, you know, different play styles have yeah. a different way. You can learn a lot about how the game works. I can build, using the force thing, I can build a 96-point army. From from just adding this set to what uh, you already yeah. had in Team Yankee and, and in Flames of War, yeah. And in the rule book, there's those command skills. So we'd have another four points if we were playing 100. Yeah, absolutely. Game. We didn't really talk about the command cards, but there are skills for, for commanders as well, which again, mix it up, make it a little bit more gamey. Um, as a starter set, I, th I think it's really good. I think it's comprehensive. I, I, we've spoke, we've interviewed Peter before. In my view, but this is my view, not yours, not yours, not anybody else's. The best starter set sets and the best campaign sets they do include some scenery. I like some scenery because I think it's a real weak point of people's collections. But I've got to say, I think at the time of recording, these are £60. They might even be 50 but I think they're 60 at full retail. Um, and there's 20-summit tanks in here. 
21 tanks and you've got the variations as well um yeah they're not stripped down versions of it or and whatever the extra cards so you, you're buying this to add to a force mm -hmm. so you play this out of the box the next game is if you've got if you're already russians or you're already americans you're just chucking in some extra tanks and the cards are there yeah absolutely but in the total beginners i think you've got all the things you need love the way that the mini codexes and stuff and the, even narrowing down to the instruction sheets they're broken down by faction so you can take your half of the box away and split it with a friend um is is playing flames of war with just tanks a good way to play well it's not a good way to play flames of war but it is a fun it's the fun part of flames of war you know it's the bit that it's still granular enough to feel like it's a decent combat um moderator but without the complexity that the infantry, artillery, aircraft, and other things bring, because they're much more cumbersome. Inevitably, they're more involved, right? Flames of War is at its very best in its tank-on-tank -tank action, and, and this game is going to simulate this. And I, I've, I've, I've introduced a couple of people to the game by just not having infantry, right? You've got three tanks there, three tanks there, there's your command. I've got yeah. similar on the other side. Yeah. And then, right. Now, next game, you've got you've got two free field guns over there and a unit of infantry over there, and now we, yeah. we expand on it, and, and people go into the game that, that way. So it's a, great, it's a great way of bridging towards Flames of War, I suppose what I'm saying, but with a, with a different set, and it gives people like me, who've already got pretty much everything they want World War II, it's like, oh yeah, but IS-3s though. Yeah. All right, guys, that's our thoughts on this cracking starter set. Thank you for watching. Bye Goodbye. Bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.